review time. I've been asked to review Wolf Hollow, which is one of those grim literary books where things get worse and worse and worse for the characters, and any chance of things getting better is just false hope. So, uh, definitely not the same genre as my beloved Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys. Argo Funk Book Review, Argo Funk Book Review. Annabelle McBride is a 12 year old girl in 1943. A new student named Betty Glengarry arrives at school. Betty misbehaves and assumes Annabelle is the rich kid, so she threatens to beat Annabelle with a stick unless Annabelle gives her something. She also threatens to hurt Annabelle's younger brothers if she tells anyone. A man named Toby lives in an abandoned smokehouse nearby. He's a World War I veteran with undiagnosed PTSD. He carries guns and wanders around the woods all day long. He's somewhat friendly with the McBride family. They give him food and let him use their camera, and he's helped them on the farm when they've gotten hurt. Annabelle offers Betty a penny. Ooh, penny. She throws it away and hits Annabelle on the hip. When Annabelle says they should be friends, Betty hits her again. Betty later gets a quail and slowly kills it in front of Annabelle just to torture her. Toby comes out of nowhere and shoves Betty into poison ivy, ordering her to leave Annabelle alone. Annabelle's mom forces her to make jewelweed to help with Betty's rashes, and when Annabelle sees how bad the rashes are, she starts to feel bad for Betty. During recess, Annabelle and her friend Ruth talk to a German man named Mr. Ansel. Someone throws a rock at them from a cliff. It hits Ruth in the eye, and she is forever blinded. Annabelle stands up to Betty, so Betty and her boyfriend Andy string a sharpened wire across the path. That way, Annabelle will walk into it and get seriously injured. Annabelle's younger brother, he's the short one, he runs down the pathway and gets hit by it. It's actually, luckily the short one hit it, because it hit him on the head. It would have caught the others in the neck. So, ugh. Uh, they take him home for help, but by the time Dad comes to investigate, the wire's been removed. Annabelle finally tells her parents about Betty, but when they talk to Betty's grandparents, Betty denies everything, and she deflects the conversation by saying, Toby's the one who threw the rock at Ruth. Betty claims she saw the whole scene from the school's belfry. And Annabelle's confused. She thought Betty was the one who threw the rock. But Betty must be innocent if she was in the belfry. This was the only part of the book where I got frustrated with Annabelle. It's obvious Betty's lying, right? If she's the one who blinded Ruth, she would not tell the truth about where she was. Constable Oleska starts asking questions about the incidents. Although there's no evidence for an arrest, uh, the teacher at school says that the door to the belfry was locked that day, so Betty couldn't have been there. This revelation comes too late. Both Betty and Toby have disappeared. The police suspect Toby kidnapped Betty, and they start a search for both of them. Annabelle goes to Toby's smokehouse, where she hears a weird porcupine noise. Toby's there! He's not hiding from the police. He missed the constable by accident, because he slept somewhere else last night. Annabelle decides it's best to hide Toby in a safe place until the search for him is over. She hides Toby in her family's barn and gets him things like food and water. They talk and they bond with each other a little. She cuts his hair and gives him new clothes so he looks like a totally different person. And he tells her all about his terrible experiences in the war, which I do not think is a fair trade. The search crew finds evidence that Betty went to Toby's smokehouse to abuse him and to frame him for the sharp wire attack. Annabelle realizes Betty's in the well at Toby's. That was the weird noise she heard there. She tells Toby about it so he can be the one to save Betty. That should clear his name and set everything right. Betty's situation is incredibly gruesome. She's not just stuck in a well. She bounced off walls and got impaled on a pipe. They rescue her, and at the very least, she has tetanus and gangrene. Annabelle's parents insist on letting the kind stranger stay with them as thanks for saving Betty. Mom realizes the stranger is Toby, but instead of getting better, things get worse. Betty lies in the hospital and accuses Toby of trying to kill her. So now the police are doing an intense search to capture Toby, dead or alive. Annabelle's parents help hide Toby for a day, but her brothers find Toby's things in the barn, they raise the alarm, and Toby is forced to flee. He leaves Annabelle a photo of himself. He didn't have a mirror, so he used his reflection in some water. It's the 1940s version of a selfie. Betty dies in the hospital the next day. Bloodhounds are brought in to capture Toby. 
Annabelle makes things a little better by getting a confession out of Betty's boyfriend. He admits that Betty is the one who blinded Ruth, not Toby. The woman who operates the phone switchboard spreads the news all over town. It should be obvious by now that the story does not have a happy ending. The police find Toby, he deliberately disobeys their orders, and takes out a non-working gun so he will be shot and killed. Both Toby and Betty get funerals, and Annabelle spends a good deal of time talking to Toby's grave. The end. Postbook follow-up. This is a gripping story. It's hard to put down, and it goes by quickly, considering how long it is. The author is clearly good at writing, and the book certainly hits the mark with its aspirations to be considered literature. I was a little skeptical at first when I read the book's description. It sounded like award bait. But the book was much better than I expected, and I'd say it deserves its awards. I agree with the critics who say this is not really a children's book. This is much more of an adult book with a child narrator. It certainly could have been a children's book if it stuck with the storyline of 12-year-old girl has to deal with a bully. And yeah, it's possible for a children's book to have some really dark material, but I think this one crosses that line. I would definitely put it in the teenage section, or the young adult section of the library, instead of putting it in the kids section right next to the boxcar children books. While I readily admit it's a good book, I cannot admit that I enjoyed it. It's too dark for my taste, and if I absolutely had to read a dark children's book, I would reread A Little Princess before rereading this one. I give Wolf Hollow a 9 out of 10.